Hello, I'm uh, Dave Messersmith with Penn State Extension uh, and part of Mar Penn State's Marcellus Education Team. And we're here today on the banks of uh, Spring Creek in Center County, a, a good setting to talk about uh, water quality concerns as it relates to Marcellus shale exploration. Uh, joining me today is Brian Swistock. Brian is Penn State's Extension Specialist uh, in Water and Water Quality. So Brian, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Glad you could be here. Uh, the topic of this video clip is uh, regulations regarding uh, water, drinking water quality as it relates to Marcellus Shale development in Pennsylvania. And we're going to kind of give kind of a snapshot of the regulations as they exist now and understand that they might be changing as uh, regulations are developed in, in the future. So, uh, Brian, I guess to begin with, can you share, um, I guess, your, our current understanding of what agencies have regulations? Uh, what, what agencies have regulatory authority over drinking water as it relates to Marcellus Shale? Yeah, it's mostly the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, the Bureau of Oil and Gas Management, uh, handles pretty much all the regulations really related to the drinking water side of Marcellus. Okay. A and as we look at the specific regulations regarding uh, drinking water quality, uh, in, in my, at least in my mind, they are the setback from uh, a, a water supply. Yep, and that's 200 feet standard setback. Okay, 200 feet uh, mm -hmm. from a well bore. Yes. To yep. a drinking water. So supply. it's from the vertical well bore. It would not inc include the horizontals. Those are going deep underneath the property. Uh, so it's really 200 feet vertical distance from that vertical borehole. Okay. Then that, that applies to springs and wells. Yeah, any drinking water supply. Okay. Uh, another piece of regulatory. Um, another piece of the regulation would be uh, the presumed responsibility. So. Uh, it's maybe if you could just take a minute or two and explain what the presumed responsibility is. Yeah, that causes that a lot of confusion among people. And what that means is that a, an energy company that's drilling is presumed responsible for any water quality problem that they cause within a thousand feet uh, in, a, in a radius around their drilling site. What it really means is who has to prove what. It, it means that they're presumed responsible so that if anything happens, they have to prove that they didn't do it. If anybody outside of that distance, if a problem occurs, it just means that you have to prove that they did it. So it's not a, a deal where if you're outside of a thousand feet, you can never get any satisfaction for a problem. It's just all about who has to prove whether the problem occurred or not. Okay. And, and with the presumed responsibility, there, there's um, just a subset of that is industry, industry testing of the water. Yes. Uh, generally within that 1,000 foot radius. Yeah, they're taking on a lot of responsibility for all those water supplies in that distance. So as a result, they want to get out there and collect that pre-existing data before they drill so that they can show what problems were there that they're not responsible for. So they're going to go out virtually every time and they're going to work with a third party lab to go out and do that testing for all those water supplies within 1,000 feet. And some of them are voluntarily going out as far as 5,000 feet to do that testing right now. Good. Uh, another piece of the regulation is the, uh, the wall casing and grouting standards as they uh, really make up the, what's called the freshwater protection screen yep. from the surface below the groundwater. Can you just maybe explain what that is and we'll show a picture during the explanation of what that, what that looks like. Yeah, this is a casing and cementing that's put in from the surface down below the groundwater and in fact extending even further now with changes in the regulations. What it's basically meant to do is allow things to move down through the well bore and back up the well bore and never go sideways out into the aquifer. So it's a protection string, they call it a string because it's basically casing, that's meant to protect that groundwater area from anything that would either be going down or up that well. And in, and in Pennsylvania, can you, are there any gener, uh, generalities you can make, or general statements you can make about the depth of the freshwater drinking supply? Yeah, in, in most cases it's going to be 500 feet or less, in some places far less than that, but that's a, a pretty good assumption that you're usually going to be within 500 feet of the surface. Yeah. And as we look at the regulations in general uh, regarding water quality in Pennsylvania, are there any, uh, are there any regulatory gaps or things, are, areas that are not currently covered under the regulations that you uh, you think might need to be covered or should be covered in the future? Well, we have to keep in mind that these regulations are from 1984, most of them, and so some of them have been going through changes because this is very different drilling than we've had in the past. So things like the 200-foot setback uh, very likely could get changed and moved further away. The, the 1,000-foot pres presumed responsibility area could very well be expanded out because of the greater, uh, greater disturbance from this much larger drilling. Uh, the uh, the bonds that are put in place are quite small right now, so I think we may see an increase in bonds too. 
And just the fact that a lot of the testing responsibility falls on homeowners and it can be very expensive. So I, I think we might see more of that uh, because of that expansion of that presumed responsibility area. Okay. And as, as new regulations come into play um, in Pennsylvania, uh, how would a landowner or, or a homeowner find out about those new regulations? Well, you can always go to the DEP Marcellus page. They, they have uh, regulations on there, and then we, of course, have fact sheets on our website, too, that will keep people updated on any of these changes as they happen. Okay. Well, uh, Brian, thanks for joining us again uh, this afternoon. You're welcome. Uh, and I'll show on the, on the screen in the video the, uh, the web link to Brian's uh, website and his information on drinking water and drinking water regulations.